think that it's lingonberries picked in the spring of 2012 under a full harvest moon. Obviously, on the southern hemisphere. Welcome back to Rewind with B. Schwitty, because around and around it goes, where it stops, no one knows. Today, uh, we're going to do a wine basics. Um, you know, I we've talked about um, talked about how to taste wine before, and you can find that episode right up here in the title card. And I thought maybe we should talk about how people figure out flavors in wine. You know, some people are confused. They think that oh, hey, they just throw these flavors in, they throw these berries in, uh, berries that aren't grapes into the wine. And that's, that's not true. As we may remember, uh, flavors in wine comes from the grape varietal itself. Uh, the ferment, the processing and fermentation processes, the aging processes and how it is aged. And that's, that's about it. There's no external influence other than the actual process of making the wine and how it's then aged in either barrel or once bottled. You may be wondering how people get like, oh, this has notes of sassafras or um, this has some mushroomy characteristics to it. And uh, I mean, yes, uh, how people think that it's lingonberries picked in the spring of 2012 under a full harvest moon obviously on the southern hemisphere so one of the easiest ways to do it and one of the best ways to kind of trigger your own olfactory senses and uh, work with your olfactory memory to kind of help you figure out where your own tasting notes are is called a flavor wheel and these are used throughout uh, not just the wine industry but uh, alcoholic beverages in general uh, the reason that I, I even thought of t covering this topic is because I saw a post of uh, a bartender that I follow uh, had a um, flavor wheel for mixed cocktails that they serve at their bar and i thought that's a really cool idea i didn't realize how pervasive flavor wheels really were until i started researching this episode and you know there's a coffee drinker's flavor wheel beer drinker's flavor wheel just about anything that has flavor has a flavor wheel and i'll put one up right here I'm pretty sure I'm going to be using the Wine Folly one, just because that's the most modern flavor wheel. Although mine's a little bit more traditional, this is probably the most updated flavor wheel I've seen uh, in the in the past couple years. It's not like flavors changes; it's just how they organize the wheel uh, has been updated into a way that makes more sense than the previous one. Which uh, here's. A mock-up of that as well um, the innermost ring will differ from the one that we're going to be covering today just because the inner ring well let's get to it um, you'll see what I mean and I'll bring it up a little bit a little bit down the line so flavor wheels there's three tiers to a flavor wheel um, the innermost ring is where you want to start and eventually you'll get to the outermost ring Now, the innermost ring is kind of the broad terms. Uh, on the one that we're using, it has uh, faults, it has tertiary, it has secondary, and it has uh, primary aromas. So, from there, uh, you'll be like, oh, what do I smell? What do I taste? And 
if it's red wine, probably somewhere in the red to black fruit region. Uh, maybe some vegetal, maybe some floral, um, maybe some dried fruit. But you'll see the kind of outer wheel. Uh, the middle ring will have some broad ideas, but it's more focused than just primary aromas. Uh, and then once you pass the inner, the middle wheel, you get to the outer wheel, and that has more specifics. Uh, like for tropical fruit, it has pineapple, mango, guava, kiwi, lychee, bubble gum, stuff like that. So it's really easy. It's very intuitive. And it really helps if you don't know exactly what that smell is. Uh, I mean, I once sniffed a bottle or sniffed a glass of wine and said immediately that this tastes or this smells of Funyuns. And it did. I, I, it, was a nice, it was a nice bottle of wine. The person that purchased it for the table was very proud of it. Uh, but I leaned over to the person next to me and I was like, this smells exactly like Funyuns. And they laughed and agreed with me. Um, <laughs> so it just goes to so show sometimes really good wine smells like Funyuns. All right, so um, I'm going to run through the aroma wheel a few times for this episode. Uh, this is a Bordeaux blend 2009 called the El Paso de Oso uh, Grande from... Oso Libre, it's 36% Cab Franc, 25% Merlot, 23% Malbec, and 15% Petit Verdot. Um, they say, well, I don't want to give away what it says on the bottle for aromas. We're going to do it ourselves. And don't you just love my deep, raspy voice today? Uh, I've Last two weeks, I've been a little bit under the weather, plus allergies. So that leaves me with a voice that sounds like this. It's very deep. Very binging with Babish. Um, I really wish I had this voice when I did the voiceover for the recipe um, from a week or two back. Regardless, can't have my voice like this all the time. I'm sure it'll be back next week. But for now, let's see. On the nose, I'm smelling some red fruit. So we're going to go primary aromas, we're going to go to red fruit, and then is it cranberry? No. Is it plum? No. Pomegranate? I didn't think about pomegranate. Initially I thought it was strawberry, but I could see pomegranate. And this is how you fill out your tasting notes. You can be like... Oh, there's a hint of pomegranate, and there's a little bit of strawberry on the nose, and then it might differ when it hits the palate. On the palate, you might be looking for some secondary uh, things, um, or some tertiary, uh, which I believe they um, have for the aging process and what it's aged in. It's definitely a hint of oak, so we're going to go, there's a little bit of oak, is it dill? No. Is it smoke? Not really. Is it cigar box? Not exactly. Baking spices? Getting closer. It's not coconut, uh, but it is vanilla. Uh, there's definitely vanilla on this, so... All right. And then in one of the, in the faults section, there's um, things that can help you determine if your wine is faulty. If you need a refresher on the six most common faults, I'll throw a card up right here. Uh, we covered that a couple weeks ago on Wine Basics. And um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much how you use a, a flavor wheel. And if you want to get this exact flavor wheel, you can find it at winefolly.com. Um, it is the most updated flavor wheel I've seen in recent years. If you want to make a game of it with your friends, trying to determine tasting notes for a wine that you're trying, or if you want to maybe have a glass ahead and then be able to talk about it uh, with your friends and see if you guys hit the same olfactory memories to get that certain 
uh, red, black, dried fruit, etc., um, to kind of spark your memories and say, oh, this does taste like fresh pomegranate or overripe strawberry or we're going to have a really mellow week this week. I'm going to make truffles for National Truffle Day on Wednesday. Um, and if I don't do that, I'm going to do a truffle pairing. One sounds very much easier. And then Friday is May the 4th. So every year I do something on Instagram for in celebration is uh, Star Wars Day, which really isn't a day. But look forward to that. Um, my name is Bishwitty. Thank you for following me. You can find me on the socials at Bishwitty, something Bishwitty. Uh, please comment, share, like, and subscribe. I appreciate every one of my followers out there. Uh, remember, we're trying to get to 100 by the summer, so I could finally release that Switzerland special that I did and then start working on a more localized uh, special uh, that I'm really, really looking forward to doing. Uh, thank you for watching. My name is Bishwitty. This has been Rewind. I will catch you next time.